Lord, we give you this time. We give you this moment. And we praise you for it. In your name. Amen. Well, this morning I'm going to talk to you for just a few moments on faithfulness. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Galatians. Thank you, worship team. I think I've got the power of it now. So you can sit with your family. Kids, I think you're staying in here with us this morning. So. Uh, did you get Becky's uh, message? Uh-uh. She needs prayer. Yeah. I didn't get Becky's message. Uh, just a little bit. But yeah. Um, What's it say? Anybody? She, well, the gist of it is she didn't make it today because she has a, a bad headache and her hip is hurting her. Okay. So let's pray for Becky. I didn't get that text. Okay. All right. Let's pray for Becky. That's why, kids, you're just going to hang out with us big kids today. Yeah. All right. Lord, we pray for Becky Smith today, Lord. We pray for this headache in the name of Jesus that you will heal her, heal her hip, heal her body in the name of Jesus. Lord, even through the airwaves that, Lord, you can reach and touch her, Lord. And we thank you for the healings that are taking place right now. Lord, as she rests, she rests in your spirit, in your presence, in your power, in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. So Galatians. Oh, oh I supposed to do communion. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, we're going to do communion. I'm glad that we get these cheat sheets. Yeah. So we're going to do communion right now. Okay. So we already prayed for healing. So, wow. That's okay. You're ready to get to work. I'm ready to get to work. So, you guys ready to have communion? Yes. Sure. Yes. Is that okay? Yeah. We're still going to talk about faithfulness in Galatians 5, so you can get, open your Bibles anyways. Check this passage of Scripture out. It's in the message uh, translation. It's not a version. It's a translation. Yeah. Uh, Eugene Peters put this together. Eugene Peters actually passed away not too long ago. And here's what it says. It says, let me go over with it with you again. I love it when, when it says that. It means he has to repeat himself again. <coughs> it means that he has to say, hey, you need to hear this all over again. In fact, this passage of scripture, it says, keep doing it until he returns. Um, guess what? Jesus is going to return, and we need to be ready for that. Amen. Yeah. And the very fact is, if we're not ready, if we're not right with the Lord, we shouldn't take communion, because at the end of this passage, it says that we should examine ourselves, yes. and if there's any sin found in us, or if we take in an unworthy manner, we shouldn't take it, because it is like uh, taking death upon ourselves, or let me, let me uh, read it for you in a right way. It says... Uh, um, anyone who eats and drink, br eats this bread and drinks this cup of the master irreverently, it's like the part of the crowd and jeered and spit on him in, in, at his death is that kind of remembrance. You want to be part of, the, of, of, of examine your motives, test your heart, come to the meal in reverence. It's, it's don't do it in an irreverent manner. Be in a right mind. Mm -hmm. Do it rightly. Examine your heart. Have a right heart. Take it rightly. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. So in this passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians, it says, let me go over with you again exactly what goes on at the Lord's Supper. Why is it so centrally important? I received my instructions from the Master himself and passed them on to you. The Master Jesus on the night he, of the, his betrayal, took bread, having given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my bread, body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he did this, the same thing with the cup. This cup is my body, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. 
What you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat this bread and, and every time you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and actions of the death, de death of the master. You will be drawn back to this meal again and again mm -hmm. until the master's return. You must never let, I love this, familiarity breed contempt. I thought that was very, because we get so familiar mm -hmm. with communion. Mm -hmm. We do it every month, and we get so like, oh, we know it's going to be the second Sunday of every month. And it becomes so familiar, but it should never, we should respect this time. And, and being on, remember that we do this in remembrance. Yes. It should re, reinvigorate us mm -hmm. of our commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So as we pass out the elements, I'm sorry guys, can I have the ushers again? Thank you guys. Oh yeah. I'm throwing you under the bus again. You did, the Bible says to examine yourself. At this moment, just take some moments and just examine your heart. Make sure you're in right, uh, in right with the Lord. If you're not, and you say, "Well, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do this," and, and you know you're not going to be right, please don't take communion today. That's between you and the Lord. I'm not going to. But if you're not right with the Lord. Don't accept the communion. Let it pass you by. It's, it's more in, it's between you and the Father. Yes. He took the bread, says, This is my body broken for you. Do this and remember of me. Let's let's take the bread and let's pray over it. Lord, thank you so much. This represents your body. Thank you for each one of us. Well, we prayed it many times, and it's one of my favorite verses. That Isaiah 53, 5, we prayed it for those that needed healing in the service this morning. We prayed for Becky this, yes. just a minute ago. Yes. And Lord, I stand on that verse every time I pray for someone that needs healing. And mm -hmm. Lord, it's, it's by your stripes that we are healed. Mm -hmm. yes. But the word healing, actually in, in, in Greek, it means to be saved as well. Yes. And Lord, we, we pray that, Lord, those that are lost will be healed or saved <coughs> as well, Lord God, because that is one of the things that you went to the cross for, is our salvation. Yes. And we ask that people's lives will be changed. Lord, because you are coming back soon. <coughs> and we ask that, Lord, that we will do this until you return. Yes. 
And Lord, we say thank you. In your name, amen. Let's receive it. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. This cup is my blood, the new covenant, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. Lord, we hold this cup that represents the new covenant. Lord, I, I have read so many books about this, and it still comes down to the plain and simple that, Lord, your blood washes our sins away. And it, plain and simple. That, Lord, you loved us so much that it's, it's so deep and so much love. And we just say thank you. Thank you for all that you've done and who you are. You're the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. And we praise you for that. In your name, amen. Let's receive it. Hallelujah. Don't you love them? There's too many people who try to live without them. Yes. Amen. 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 <coughs> All right, we're going to need you to go. Oh, there we go. This morning we're going to talk about faithfulness, Galatians 5. We're going to start out with Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Is our stepping out verse, stepping off verse. And then we're going to read the chapters, Galatians 5, 16, 25 to 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Let me just go back for that. Yeah. <laughs> but the fruits of the Spirit is love. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to get to some difficult ones. Okay. Joy, peace, yeah. forbearance, yeah. kindness, goodness, faithfulness, yeah. gentleness, self-control. I think in this day and age, people have difficulties like with every single one of those, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Yes. I think love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, mm -hmm. gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. But if we look at the full gamut of this passage of scripture, we can see uh, a whole lot of different things. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Listen to this passage of scripture before we pray. It says, so I, so I say, walk in the spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires that is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit, what is contrary to the flesh. So right here, we are seeing yet a battle that is going on, don't we? Yes. So there is a battle of the spirit and the flesh. We see this in the world, and we it, it's pretty exciting, but pretty <laughs> detrimental. Because yeah. it happens even in the, the world today, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's continue on, because <laughs> I can go all crazy with this. They are in conflict with each other. So that there that you are not to do whatever you want. Yeah. Right. And the world says, what? Yeah. I'm going to read that again. Uh -huh. So that you are not to do whatever you want. Right. Right. See, that's the problem. The world says, I can do whatever I want. But the scripture here does it say that there is conflict between the spirit and the flesh. 
The bottom line is you can't do whatever you want. Amen. Oh, let's continue on. You're not excited yet. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Not so much. Look at our world today. If they were so obvious, we would not be doing them. Oh my goodness. If they were so obvious, the world would not be doing them. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hate, hatred, hatred, discord, Jealousy, fits of rage. Yes. yes. Jealousy, fits of rage. Uh -huh. Discourse, hatred, witchcraft, yeah. idolatry, mm -hmm. impurity, mm -hmm. sexual immorality, debauchery. Oh, I went backwards. Okay. <laughs> Dissensions, mm -hmm. factions, envy, mm -hmm. drunkenness. Orgies, the like. What's it say? The acts of the flesh are obvious. Yes. Not so much. If it was so obvious, they wouldn't be doing it. I'll just go on and be honest. Because I'm preaching to spiritual crowd, people that walk in the spirit. <coughs> right? Yes. 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 Amen. Mm, yes. Mm, thank you, Jesus. <sighs> and those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom. <coughs> Of God. Those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. See, here's the problem is. Now, if this offends you, talk, talk with the Holy Spirit about that. Because this is the word of God, because it is obvious. That this is the problem, that these are things of the flesh. Yes. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. But the fact, the problem is, we may have all these things that are sins of the flesh, and these are supposed to be the, the, the things of the Spirit, we as a church, we have problems with these that are spirit-led. Come on, church, you need to hear me. Yeah, yeah. Because we, we are, look at me, I walk in the spirit, love, joy, peace, forbearance. We become very judgmental of all the others that are so obvious. Come on, we forget that we're supposed to be love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness. Come on, if we're supposed to be walking in love, we should come alongside those that are walking in flesh and say, can I show you the love of Jesus and show them the cross and those that are loved and stop judging so much and show them the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. We forget that we're no better then the, the least sinner, Peter, Paul, says that I am the greatest of all sinners. Is that right? The very fact is, we have to come down to this. Remember what I read is, there is a fight that's going on. Flesh and spirit. Yes. Pastor, you're supposed to be talking about faithfulness. I am talking about faithfulness. Because if we're walking in the Spirit, 
We need to also love in the Spirit. We must have joy in the Spirit. We must have speak peace in the Spirit. We must have forbearance in the Spirit. We must have kindness in the Spirit. We must have goodness in the Spirit. We must have faithful in the, faithfulness in the Spirit. Come on, church. Yes. We must have gentleness in the Spirit. We must have self-control in the Spirit. Against such things there is no law. Come on. Those who belong in, to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and its, and its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Faithfulness sets us apart from other people. Faithfulness separates, listen, successful from failures. The finisher from the quitter, the responsibility from the irresponsible, the mature from the immature, the righteous from the sinner. You have grown up and are living in a society that is unfaithful. The tabloids are filled with stories of unfaithfulness. Hollywood marriages are plastered all over the places. Divorces and love affairs are glamorized and, and, and plastered saying, hey, look, at, isn't this awesome? But can I tell you that the, the divorce rates are up and, and marriage that can last more than two days are, are, are like, wow, you're breaking the statistics. <coughs> we need to understand that faithfulness needs to be at an all-time high. Especially in the church. And we look at the commitment to Jesus Christ as that it should be like, I'm doing it for Jesus. I'm all in. I'm going to remain faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can find even in the Hallmark card. We can find society acceptance of unfaithfulness at a card shop. I was reading this in an article, visit a Hallmark store when a card can say, when you can care enough to send the very best and you can find cards that fit the unfaithful style of our day. One card in love and sweetheart section cards, I can't promise you forever, but I can promise you today. I suppose you can even put that on an anniversary card. See, that's about as deep commitment as some are willing to make. I'm glad God promised us more than just today. Amen. Psalms 100 verse 5 says, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. And his faithfulness continues throughout all generations. When it comes to faithless thing, faithfulness, one thing you can know for sure, God is faithful. God will never turn his back on you. God will never abandon you. God will never take advantage of you or mistreat you. God is faithful. Amen. So we look at faithfulness. People look at faithful as authentic. Faithful. Faithfulness is truthful. Faithfulness is real. Faithfulness is accurate. The Heritage Dictionary defines faithfulness as adhering, familiar, devoted, as to a person, cause, idea. Faithfulness is a stick to itness. Super glue. I love super glue. Gorilla glue. It holds us together and won't let go. See, people have been hurt when we think someone's going to be faithful and they broke that faithfulness. See, joy is love, rejoicing. Patience is love, enduring. Peace is love, trusting. Kindness is love, serving. Goodness is love, extending. Faithfulness is love, proving. 
Gentleness is love touching. Self-control is love restraining. What What does faithfulness look like? The word faithfulness is Jesus. If you want to see faithfulness lived out in today, today, day-to-day life of someone, look at Jesus. If you are going to live a faithful life, then you live your life just like Jesus. Hebrews 2.17 in the New Living Translations, Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would, be, would take away the sins of his people. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.13 says this, If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. That was the introduction, by the way. Four aspects of faithfulness this morning. Number one, faithful holds the truth. Faithful holds the truth. You need to have an unshakable tenacity that will never, will not let go of truth. Opinions may change, values may differ, but truth remains the same. What is truth for you is truth for me. What is truth for me is truth for you. Our society wants us to believe truth is relative. And there is no absolute truth. Do you notice the contradiction is such a belief? How can you claim absolute doesn't exist with an absolute statement? Revelation 2.25 says this. In the message, hold on to the truth you have until I get there. Values are relatives. Values will differ from person to person or culture to culture. Truth is absolute. Truth is the same for all of us. So hold on to truth. The Bible is authoritative and a guide for how to live. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Hear that, church. All scripture is inspired by God. How are we supposed to learn how to live if we never get in the word of God? If we let it sit on our coffee table and say, oh, that's a nice leather book. We need to get into it. Yes. Amen. It, is, it realizes the true to make us realize what is wrong and what is right. Yes. Come on, church. Mm-hmm. We also have to realize that Jesus Christ is the only hope of salvation. Amen. Yeah. Acts 4.12. Well, Wow. Where did I get that from? Well, that just popped up on me. Well, that's the other part of my second Timothy. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. There you go. Hallelujah. I should have kept reading. Here's Acts 4.12. I get ahead of my brain. Salvation comes no other way. No other name has been or will be given to us by which we can be saved. Only this one. People say there's all these other ways that you can be saved, but there's only one. His name is Jesus Christ. His only one way, his name is Jesus Christ. And everyone says, hey, wait a minute, you can get saved some other way. Come on, there's only one, his name is Jesus Christ. They'll say, hey, wait a minute, you can get saved through a dollar bill. No, that will say you can buy your way into the kingdom of God. Come on, you can buy a tarot card. You can buy a, 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 a great uh, whatever you want. Yeah, you can believe in yourself. You can get yourself into heaven. You don't really have to go to church. You, you really don't. Pastor, you did not really just say that. I can stay home. And I can be saved. Do you know that's really true? 
But how far would you grow in the Lord <coughs> without that iron sharpened iron? Amen. That's right. How long, I'm just going to speak true, how long do you think your salvation will last? <coughs> in the confines of your own home. <coughs> I know that for me, I'm just going to speak transparently. I need you guys. You guys encourage me. I'm going to speak through me, not for you. I need you guys. You guys encourage me. Not because I'm the pastor. You encourage me. That's that iron sharp as iron. The Bible says, do not forsake the gathering up together one another. But the Proverbs says, iron sharpens iron. I need you guys. I could call you up and say, hey, man, I'm having a bad day. I, I need prayer. I call you guys. But I need you guys. We're a family. But I need you guys. And I hope you need each other. I hope you can count on one another. But this building will never save you. Salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. Yes. We have to understand that. We gather together together to learn from Scripture, to be encouraged through Scripture. Tell, I'll tell you what, one day we might get hit by a tornado and this building may not be here. Right. Right. You know what that means? Insurance buys us a new one. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. And everybody says... Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we might have to meet in a tent for a while, which would be all right. Yes. People are more important than things. That's right. Listen to this verse. Do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Yeah. But store up yourselves treasures in heaven where moths <coughs> and vermin do not destroy and where th thieves do not break in and steal. Amen. For where your treasures are, there your heart will also. <coughs> oh. yes. Stuff doesn't matter. The fourth thing in number one is this. God owns everything yeah. and loans it to us for our short time. Mm -hmm. The earth is the Lord and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. And number five and number one, or whatever letter that may be, what happens in me is more important than what happens to me. Figure that one out. Yeah. Philippians 1 6 in God's Word, that's a version. I'm convinced that God, who began this good work in me, will carry it through to completion on the day of Christ Jesus. Yeah. And Romans 28, and I, we know that in all things, God works for good for those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Number two, to faithfully preserve through difficulty. Whew. Persevere. We're going to have problems. Be faithful through those problems. God will get us through. Mark eleven twenty three. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japheth, about David, David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms of administrative justice and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fiery, furry fire of the flames and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, who became powerful in battle and rooted, rooted the foreign armies 
Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so they were, might gain an, an even better re resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and e even chairs, chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. We haven't had a leave breakdown yet. <laughs> The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes and in the grounds. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Persevere through difficulty. God is so good. God is faithful. We need to remain faithful no matter what. Yeah. Number three. The faithful com keep their commitments. Keep their commitments. Matthew 25, 21. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your, your master's happiness. This is important. Be faithful to keep your commitments. Live by commitment, not by feelings. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. Thomas Gent Edison invented his 98% perspirations and 2% inspiration. If we base everything on how we feel about something, we'll never do anything. If we commit to do something, let's do it. If we say, I'm, going, I'm committed, let's do it. We'll get more things ac accomplished. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, great. I, I, tell, I, I text this to Abby just about every day. I'll tell you what I text her. It's not, oh, I love you, baby girl. You're awesome. I say, Abby, do great exploits for God. That's her commitment. What, do you, what is your commitment? God, I think I'm going to get out of bed today. Your commitment. Do great exploits for God. I'm going to walk out my front door. Wherever I go to work at, I'm going to do great exploits for God. If God puts in front of me to do something for God, I'm going to do it. If I'm tired, I'm still going to do it. My favorite thing to do is, is if I can do it, I'm going to do it with all my might. If, if, if I have to get up on a roof, which I know nothing about, I'm still going to do it. I'm going to slam my fingers. I'm going to do it. I'm going to poke my head on the rafters up here. There's blood stains up there. That's awesome. <laughs> do whatever we can do. The Bible says do whatever you can with all your might. Yes. Do it. We sometimes have the mentality because that's what the world tells us to do. Somebody else can do it. Not really. Because you may be that person who is called upon to do it. Be committed enough to say, God, I'm that person. Let me do it. It's me. Yes. Be committed. Here's the deal. I love sometimes working with kids. They'll be like, me, 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 especially if they know they're going to get rewarded for it. But if we're working with adults, somebody else can always do it. 
But what if we had that childlike faith? And says, me, I can do it. I'm willing to do it. It may cost me a little bit, but I'm willing to do it. It may cost you something, but do it. It may be you crossing the room for somebody to learn about Christ and somebody's life to be changed for Jesus. Amen. Would that be worth it? Amen. Yes. But you'll never know until you stand up and say, me, 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 me. You'll never know. It was last year in, in, uh, in Mexico when that became a realization to me, more than anything, is when I got handed a pair of sunglasses to cross the road to the cartel. That if that, that two pairs of sunglasses would have made a difference in those guys' lives. What if, those sun, if I didn't cross the road with those pair of sunglasses, if they didn't, that sunglasses could have made the difference in their life and they could have re received Christ and maybe been the greatest help to that church that was there. <laughs> crossing the road, crossing the aisle, crossing to tell some about Jesus, bring them a pie, bring them a, a bag of cookies. Just asking, doing something, passing out nine volt batteries, doing something for Jesus. Just being willing is the first step. At the judgment seat, Jesus is not going to ask if you were successful, but if you were faithful. Number four, faithfulness makes a fresh start. Psalms 51.10 says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. I want you to just focus on that verse in closing. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. That very passage of scripture is the beginning <coughs> of renewing of your faithfulness. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God. <clears throat> Renewing a steadfast spirit within me. I like stirring the pot, making new. <clears throat> if you just bow your heads, close your eyes. As I read that verse again, if you just kind of pray that, that verse as I read it and let God just resonate for that verse in your heart. Psalms 51.10 Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, I ask that as we just read that verse, that begins to stir up new things in each one of our lives. That very thing that you're asking us to do. That very thing that you're speaking us to do. That very thing that you're commanding us to do. May we do it. May we become more faithful in the direction that you're causing us to do. Lord, we praise you, we honor you, Lord. Lord, may you bless every single person in this room. Lord, may you continue to direct our steps, guide our steps, speak to us daily, and may we do great exploits for you because we're remaining faithful to you. Bring us back tonight as we hear from 
Marco and Chacho, Lord, in your name. Amen.